Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Catherine Tanaka, fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. We are almost celebrating two years of this podcast in the midst of a global pandemic. Now, we have done a lot over the last eight weeks of being isolated since the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic, right? And I know that this conversation is so relevant for now and might not really be kept in the podcast going forward, but I wanted to take a moment and reflect back on the eight weeks of what we've been speaking about on the podcast and kind of looking at what I have celebrated, the things that have come up over the last two months, and where we're going in the conversation in the next month or so. So... For me, as an entrepreneur, my business shut down on March the 16th, right? When they said everything is closing. And I truly didn't think that it was going to last so long. But here we are over eight weeks in and we are still in Canada in quite a lockdown. And even though some restrictions are being lifted, the probability of my fitness studio getting back up and running anytime soon is probably not possible. I had a really beautiful opportunity last week invited by Damien Reed, who is a global entrepreneur, has been for almost three decades, uh, that speaks very much about entrepreneurship and creating wealth as an entrepreneur. He invited me onto his podcast and we spoke about how I have shifted my business in the midst of COVID. And so I wanted to share with you because I, I feel like I don't really share that side of things. I share about my incredible guests that come on, but I thought I would take a second to share a little bit of the entrepreneur side. So March 16th, had to sh shut down the studio. And I was in a bit of a panic, to be honest. I really thought that this wasn't going to last long. And I also know that many of my clients depend on me to support them in the conversation of fitness, movement, nutrition, accountability. And I do believe that before COVID, your health is your wealth and your body is your temple. And as such, it is so important to honor your body as the vehicle, the sacred space of which your body, all of you resides, right? Whether it's your soul, your mindset, your body, this is what we've got in this lifetime, right? And so I believe that movement and Physiologically, the signs will tell you that movement is so vital to our health, right? And as mental health and the space of mental health research is advancing, you know, that research will also tell you it is a core foundation of having fortitude and resiliency in your mental health. And with so much panic around, especially the beginning of when COVID came onto the scene, a lot of people were in anxiety, panic, fear, overwhelm. And if I could be of service to move people through this panic, through movement, I felt very compelled and called to do that. So with a couple of nights of lost sleep, not knowing what to do, like, do I shut down my business? Do I keep going? How can I be of service right now? I decided because I have seven years of running an online uh, program to shift what I do in person completely online. And so I opened up the Body Project online studio on basically March the 19th, where we do live workouts so my clients that are used to coming to see me in person can still get that face-to-face -face interaction. And we've built this little community online, this online studio, which has been quite powerful because you wouldn't think that the, you know, having an online studio would be that impactful. But the things that I hear is that it feels like family. I feel connected. I'm so grateful for this space and that it actually holds them accountable to nourishing their body bodies well, to taking on the mindset of your body, you're building a strong build body to build a strong mind. And the resiliency that has taken place over the last eight weeks inside this online studio has been pretty magical, truthfully. And so 
I am so grateful that I can hold the space for people to show up for themselves so that they can show up for themselves, right? Because the truth is when you're stuck at home and it feels like Groundhog Day as it does for me every single day, that it is nice to feel like you are being guided through movement in a way that is productive, that is challenging, that is going to alter your state. Like Tony Robbins says, alter your state and you'll alter your life right? From an emotional standpoint, you can change your emotions, those peptides in your body through physical movement, right? And from a stress standpoint right now, and this, and this will bring me to my next point about why I've tried to be a beacon and a guide for other trainers and coaches like myself, is because when you move your body, in the fashion of resistance training, HIIT workouts, you know, more metabolic condition kind of workouts, it helps you metabolize those stress hormones. It helps your body move through those stress hormones in your system so that you are not holding it in and that you can actually process them and get rid of them out of your system, right? Which is so vital on a day-to-day basis, but especially now when there is overwhelm. And even if you're not one to be experiencing anxiety that you're like, Catherine, I'm actually great, right? It is undeniable that knowing that it's a global pandemic, even if you're not watching the news like myself, or even if you live under a box or a rock or whatever the saying is, right? That globally, the energy is shifting, right? There is a lot of mourning, grief, sadness around that Just because we are human beings, we can sense that, right? And yes, I don't believe that you should fester in that energy, but there is this collective sadness mourning right now um, that is undeniable. So even though you may not be one in anxiety and panic, you may just have a baseline of more overwhelm than usual physiologically, that it is still important to move through, right? I've had, and so I will get to my next point, that because of this, I believe that fitness and movement professionals like myself are more important now than ever. I think that one of the last things that will open up are gyms and fitness studios and boutiques and whatever. And in fact, I know a lot of my guests on the podcast and people in the industry that I've known for over the last 20 years have had to shut down their businesses because of COVID-19 which is, of course, unfortunate and sad from a business perspective, from a life perspective, but collectively, the impact on that client base is quite detrimental. Because like I said, your health is your wealth, and as fitness and movement professionals, we are a beacon of guidance for our clients, right? And I say it all the time on this podcast, I think that we have a huge responsibility to be that knowledge, to be that guide, to be the beacon for others, right? Because, you know, oftentimes people are stressed and busy and overwhelmed as a baseline, right? And so if we can now be the facilitators and say, yes, you can, right? Turn that doubt into, you know, discipline, into determination, right? And add in gentleness, add in self-compassion, add in self-care. Self-care as movement is also a powerful practice, right? And so that is why I think that fitness and movement professionals need to do what I did. Take their studio in person and put it online, right? And, you know, there are many people that know how to do that. But for those of you that don't, or if you know somebody in the fitness space that don't, doesn't know how to do that, get them to reach out to me. That's what I do, right? I did it overnight for my clients. I've been doing it overnight for other people, whether it is consulting them to support them, you know, you know, masterminding it together so that I can create the back end and a couple people have been doing their content so they can just merge it together in this beautiful symbiotic relationship to support their clients. Um, But what I was speaking with Damien Reed about on his podcast was that 
if you are a fitness and movement professional, and actually even if you're not, but specifically for fitness and movement, this is not only a beautiful opportunity for you to be of service now to support your clients in a really super powerful way, but it also gives you an opportunity to create a different offering for your clients when we are back up and running. It is a robust, a robust website, membership site for your clients to live into. It's a living, breathing entity that people move through week after week with workouts, with adding in nutrition tips, tricks, guidance, your favorite recipes, right? As well as mindset modules, right? And it doesn't have to be like cognitive behavioral therapy or it doesn't have to be like psychology based, but it can be looking at positive thinking. It can be looking at positive affirmations. It can be sharing your own practices, putting in those habits in place, just like the habit of working out or the habit of drinking more water hydrating. These things are so fundamental. And even though to us as fitness and movement professionals and to many of you watching or listening, it is part of your own practice. Many people are still in the beginning stages of their journey, right? And even though I have been doing this for over two decades for myself and for others, I am still on my journey right? It is a never ending, constantly evolving Kaizen, continuous improvement facet of life, right? And so, you know, I, I feel very grateful for the opportunity to be able to share my story. And, you know, for me, it was nothing else other than wanting to be of service to my clients, and also having this need to be able to continue on in my business in a powerful way, right? You know, I've had several careers now. I've been a trainer for 20 years and I was a dental hygienist for 10. I worked in my, my husband's family business for three. And then fitness has basically been a quite robust full-time gig over the last seven and a half years, uh, probably six months after my son was born eight and a half years ago. And part of that is that, you know, there is this beautiful thing that I can do for my clients and I have built some incredible relationships I am so grateful for. And that allows me to be my best version so that I can pull from those so that they can live their best self also, right? And so I have a very strong desire, strong desire to support and cheer people on to be their greatest self through movement, right? And so I didn't want to let my business die. And therefore, I'm continuing on this conversation. And so in the midst of you know, everything being shut down, I pivoted the conversation on this podcast because I thought there was a great need to speak about what is so, right? Podcasts have this beautiful opportunity to be what they call an evergreen conversation, meaning that when you listen to this podcast, it could be in a month, six months, six years, that it would be as relevant and tangible as it is today, right? Well, a global pandemic, especially the first one in, you know, 100 whatever years, that was 500, whatever it was the last time we had a major pandemic, um, is unprecedented for our times, right? And therefore, this conversation will not be relevant in three years, hopefully, God willing, right? However, I believe that shifting the conversation was important, important for the need right now now. And we were in the midst of a series about going from frumpy to fabulously fit, right? With Danae Pierce. And we will resume on that conversation because we actually have recordings in the bank for it. Um, but with that being said, I literally put a pause on the conversation and we started talking about habits, habits that we've had in place before, habits that I've had in my life for years, 
almost a decade, right? Those habits that give us the fortitude and the resiliency when shit hits the fan, like a global pandemic, right? And of course, unprecedented times require unusual questions and requires shift, right? A shift in the way that we did things, right? Even in the best rituals that we've had, right? Maybe amping them up like I have been doing. But we changed the conversation and I started interviewing people that aren't just in the fitness and movement space, right? We interviewed Michelle Jacobs out of the HeartMath Institute who specializes in um, emotional freedom technique, right? Tapping. And she brought us through a beautiful heart math meditation that people can use every single day to get go inside instead of outside, to get quiet and be present with what's so, right? I interviewed Samara Zelniker out of, she is the founder of Mindfulness Matters, who spoke specifically about mindfulness, what mindfulness is, how we can use it as a practice today, how we can get present, right? And how we can disengage that fight or flight response, disengage that panic stricken anxiety that many of us are feeling, right? And this doesn't mean to negate mourning. This doesn't mean to negate things that really are happening, right? People getting sick, people losing loved ones, people being affected, right? Even Knowing somebody who has lost somebody is enough is enough right now to have grief and sadness. And so that's not to say not to experience those things, but here is another tool in our toolbox that we can use in those moments of overwhelm, of panic, because you don't need to reside in that space, right? And then I also shared with you my morning routines, what I use as a baseline so that I can catapult my day from a place of functioning in my power. I believe that we all have an opportunity to empower ourselves every single day. Every single day we have a choice of what we say, how we show up, how we are present, and how we stay within our power, right? And then I spoke again with Tracy Sagrati. I believe this is the third, second or third time she's been on the podcast. She is an incredible bright light. But she spoke about how yoga is a powerful tool. And if you haven't listened to any of these episodes I've mentioned, go back if you can. I will note them in the show notes below because they are incredible powerhouses. Tracy did a 21-day challenge of movement and meditation, these short, little, consumable blips of five minutes of movement, right? So I encourage you, do them now, right? It is never too late to add in movement or something different or try, try something on for size. And it's beautiful for your kids to get involved if you have kids or partners or your quarantine buddy, whatever it is. And then I also sat down with... Um, with Karen Gannett, who is a nutritionist, but also a yogi. And we spoke about nourishing your body, nourishing our body from a place of not having to or should to, but like what feels good, right? What is good? And when we look at what feels good, also honoring those practices of what will elevate our physiology, what will elevate our emotions, what will elevate our energy, because there is science behind the way we fuel our body that can upregulate or downregulate emotions, right? And so we were speaking about how can we add in things that will support our gut health, gut health often being our second uh, immune system, our second brain center to emotions, right? And so I think it was such an important conversation, but she broke it down to tangible tools you can do now. Now, I won't go through every single guest, but I think that we have sprinkled a beautiful offering over the last eight weeks of having almost two conversations a week about overwhelm and tools to access less stress, more ease, right? We spoke a lot about homeschooling. We had three episodes about parenting and homeschooling. And really this was out of a need because I have been feeling overwhelmed and stuck in this place, right? And so I had an incredible friend, Keika Dasgupta on. We had um, uh, Randy Taran last week, who is 
really a powerhouse in happiness. I had um, the happiness doctor, Dr. Jillian Mandich, come and join us. But all in all, my point being is that right now, I took on the positive spin. And I implore you that you look to these things that are offering you some positive push, whether it's inspiration, reminder, um, giving you momentum to put in practices that will support your well-being, physical, emotional, mental, right? So I wanted to check in. How are you doing emotionally? How are you doing with your mental health right now? And I invite you, my online studio is open to anyone. Right now, it's probably about 50-50 men and women because the workouts are accessible for both and can be accessible for beginners all the way to, you know, intermediate, advanced-ish, right? Um, so you are welcome to join us inside my online studio, www.katherinesnacka.com slash online studio, right? But I wanted to kind of frame today's conversation about what is to come. You know, we've kind of been sitting in this place of waiting in the last eight weeks since this global pandemic struck us in Canada. And I want to propose that we become a little bit more vigilant and start taking action. And this is not to say that it's like go time to start pushing because it's not. But we now have had an opportunity to sit, to process a little bit. And it's not to say that the processing is over because it isn't. But upcoming this week, we ha I'm having a great conversation with Dr. Sajad Faisal out of Alberta, who is leading the conversation and the research around COVID misinformation, right? And so it was a really... Um, awakening conversation for me because he's so full of knowledge and information, but really looking at how much misinformation there is out there that really creates a lot of fear, that is fear mongering, that really creates a lot of anxiety and mental health problems that the Journal of Psychology is showing that, you know, a lot of mental health providers are having to deal with this fear because of media, right? And so he proposes that we take on a very vigilant stance of taking responsibility for what we are consuming, right? What are you putting on your plate that is feeding you, that is moving you, that is getting into your psyche, into your mind? And so I wanted to have a bit of a conversation, a cautionary conversation. I guess I'm coming in with caution because... Um, my intention is to motivate you, to give you a little bit of momentum, for you to look at the habits that you have in place. Actually, I saw a friend of mine, Parol, um, say this the other day that her father asked her, actually, and I will, I want to qu quote her father who she says uh, she adores. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yes. Her father asked her, are your habits meeting your goals or do you have, lo do you have to lower your goals to meet your habits? Thank you for sharing that, Pearl, because I wonder this question all the time for my own life, right? And I think that I allow you guys to ponder this for yourselves because I believe that the way that you live your life, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? And the habits that we put in place are those action principles that give us the momentum to get us to where we want to go, right? And it is in these rituals that we put in day in and day out, the simple things, like I always talk about baby steps, right? The baby steps that give you that micro difference that starts moving the needle forward in your life. And that's why I always speak about and come back to movement. Movement is a powerful practice of discipline and focus that allows you to do the practice, right? It is that constant repatterning, going in, changing your state, redoing it again, 
right? That you get a choice every single day to move your body. And then it strengthens that muscle like the physicality of movement. Same thing with your mindset. Same thing with emotional regulation. Same thing with judgment. Same thing with nourishing your body, nutrition, right? It's that choice, right? People think that my nutrition is perfect. It's not. It's a practice. Literally, it's a practice of saying yes to fueling my body well, saying yes to honoring my body as the temple of a sacred space, right? Yes, I love sweets and chocolates. I love it all. I love alcohol. I love fried food. I love burgers. I eat burgers. I do it all. But it's the practice of moderation because honoring my body is fueling it optimally, right? And some of those things are suboptimal, right? Not bad, suboptimal. And if you want to function optimally, you need to do the things that are optimal, right? Coffee. (laughs) So I just took a big sip of coffee. Um, And so my proposition to you is to take a glimpse of one habit that you have in place now that makes you feel good and that you feel like you're winning when you do that. For me these days, it has been hydration. Hydration for me has been so tough, I don't know why, being at home that I have to deliberately if you haven't seen it on my Instagram stories, you can follow it along, Fit on Instagram, that I have to deliberately every morning put things in place. I literally fill up four mason jars of water, two with age quencher in it, one with plain water with lemon or water with doTERRA lemon drops, um, and then one with collagen protein. Because I know that if I do not do that and it's not my face sitting and saying, why am I looking at you, it won't happen, right? And so for me, if my hydration works well day after day, I feel like I have won. And so I'm asking you, what habit do you have in place, just one, that makes you feel good? And then what habit do you not have in place that you could take on? right? I know a lot of my clients right now, their sleep has been all over the place, right? Binge watching different shows on Netflix and whatever it is that doesn't allow them to get the rest that they need, right? And it throws off their routine. Many people aren't going to work traditionally like they used to. They can work in pajamas, they can roll out of bed and then start their day. What I'm proposing is that routine is crucial. Routine allows your circadian clock to get regulated as the foundation of which you can spring from, right? And so how is your sleep? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you, do you have a routine that calls to you to get in place? Just because we are not working, some of us right now, doesn't mean you have to stay in your PJs and watch TV all day. You can start a beautiful morning ritual of some movements with me live 9 a.m., just saying, right? Or find a beautiful yoga practice, Pilates online, booty bar, ballet, dance, kick, whatever is your jam, right? There is everyone and their moms right now that are trainers and non-trainers doing workouts for you. So find them. Find what works for you, right? And like Dr. Faisal said, which you will hear on Friday, is that We need to be vigilant and be aware that there's a lot of misinformation out there that is going to change your perception on things and might damper your emotional health and mental health, right? And so he says that the question that people say when they see a piece of information, the first question they ask themselves is, should I share this, right? He believes the first question you should ask is, is this true? And so I bring this up today because I want you to ask yourself when you are feeling stuck, right? And you have maybe limiting beliefs or self-sabotaging thoughts or conversations with yourself, like you're doing a shitty job, like I was saying to myself as a parent, homeschooling my kids, or you're failing as a business owner because you had to shut down your business and things have shifted that you, you know, whatever the conversation is, right? Stop. 
ask yourself, is this true? And if you actually become present to what is, you will find that these are things, per, perhaps stories or conversations that you've had with yourself in the past that you've patterned back into your life. I know for me, things have come up over the last six weeks that I thought that I had dealt with from a place of self-development, but right with ferocity within this unprecedented time, it has come back to say, you thought you were clear on these things, right? Your ego shows up. Those limiting beliefs show up. The self-sabotage shows up. So here is my question today of why I think it is important to start taking some form of action, looking at your habits and what you are doing, what you are saying, how you are moving, how you are fueling yourself, right? How do you want to come out of this time? How do you want to come out of COVID feeling like, being like, living like, right? I know that one of the things that has been such a guiding light for me has been my routine, has been having to show up live for my clients in my online studio, has been doing morning cycles, even 20 minutes with my husband, right? Getting up at 6 a.m. still, has been doing those things because then I don't feel like I'm derailing every single day. And what I am also clear is that what I don't want to come out of COVID with is this overwhelm of life when life has to get back to normal because the reality is we're going to have to go back to a new normal but that means we're going to have to ramp up our lives right and if i've just been personally fee i know for me if i've just been sitting and loafing around and not honoring the routines for myself and my well-being and my physical mental health that I know it'll be so emotionally stressful to come back to that hereafter. And so, you know, this isn't, there is no, whatever has happened in the last week is done, right? So let it go. People have been just chilling out and rightfully so. This is an unprecedented time, unprecedented measures. And like Dr. Jillian Mandich said, right? She said, right now, we are all just getting by the way we can get by. And so do your thing. But ask yourself, how do you want to come out of COVID-19? I had this conversation with this incredible woman last week. And she asked me this. She goes, I keep asking myself, how do I want to come out of this? And, you know, she's going to be starting with program with me on May the 25th, along with some other women. And this is what the program is about. I wasn't going to do any programs at this time, to be honest. I was just going to run the online studio and really try to focus on my kids. But I think this is, there is a need. And so I'm inviting you if this is of something that interests you. Because right now, there is more overwhelm than when we are, we're feeling overwhelmed, working and having no time for fitness and nutrition and whatever else before COVID, right? And so this is going to be a different kind of program. It's called Project U because it's about you, about what do you need right now? What is important to you? What desires do you have wanting to come out of COVID-19, right? You know, a lot of people over the last couple of weeks have candidly shared that they have been feeling like crap. You know, I think one of the beautiful things during this time is a lot of people are cooking more and baking more and trying new recipes. I know I have, right? One of the challenges is that we're eating more and trying more foods and more yummy things and more baked goods than ever before, right? Which is a lovely offering. What you want to ask yourself is, are you functioning suboptimally now because you're over consuming, right? Because there is a difference between consuming, nourishing, eating, enjoying, but then indulging, overindulging, continuously overindulging because we're trying to balance that emotional lack or void or distress or stress or overall anxiety and getting into this screw it mentality, right? Like, oh, what's the point? We're in COVID, we're in isolation, screw it. Here's the reality. We are going to get out of this. 
number one. Number two, we still want to feel good in our bodies and be healthy, right? And so this is what she said, I feel like crap, right? Some people within the first four weeks, you know, felt like they were spiraling out of control. I know for me, I started drinking more than ever, right? And so how do we want to come out of COVID-19? How are you doing right now? And this conversation, you know, yes. So my online programs are usually about weight loss. How do we transform what you're doing now to get the habits in place so it can support you in a sustainable and consistent way that you can feel good, right? That you can feel great, that you can live your best version and your get to your highest self. That is my thing, right? That is my goal for you. That is my cheerleading for everyone. That is what I go for. It may be a side effect to this process, but what we are stripping away here is the conversation of negativity, talking about positivity, looking at where we're struggling, looking at those self-sabotaging habits and conversations, those limiting beliefs that have been now amplified during this time, and using some tools to put in place to rewire, reset, reframe, shift, pivot, right? That conversation during this time. And then look at what foods can we make that fuel our bodies well, that are delicious, that feel sustainable, that metabolically supports our system, but not in a way that is starving us, not in a way that is distracting us, not in a way that is overwhelming us, right? Resetting our metabolism, getting rid of the crap, cut it out right? And then bringing in self-compassion, self-love, self-care through movement. Movement. We are human beings, moving bodies, meant, built to move, right? No, you don't have to become a power lifter. Not at all. But we are meant to move. So let's move our bodies. So this will be about moving our bodies together in a way that is expansive, in a way that feels like a big hug and creating this meaningful connection, even within a small community that feels like I've got you. I've got you, right? We all want to feel connected like someone has us. And so Project You is about you because I've got you. And so if you want to know more, let's jump on a call. If you could feel compelled to join, like, yes, I know I just need something, join us. Five weeks, all about you. Movement, nourishing your body, nourishing your soul, taking care of each other. Because through this unprecedented time, we need to take unprecedented measures to rise above. And so even if you don't join me, I am here to cheer you on. Meaning that join these conversations week after week. Listen to the past conversations. Get that little aha moment. Get that little tool in your toolbox that you can use in your life. I would love to hear from you. I would love to know where maybe you're stuck or you're struggling or what you need right now to rise above. And I can share some resources that I have that perhaps may land with you right? If you haven't yet, I would love for you to rate, review, and subscribe anywhere you find this podcast. But most of all, I appreciate you. I see you during this time. I know the struggle is real. But the reason why I keep this conversation going and have amped it up to twice a week, mostly, is because I know that this is an important conversation. Please join me on Friday as I interview Dr. Faisal. And join me next week, every Monday. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.